Well, welcome. And uh, today we are going to be doing the challenge called New Year Chaos. This is on Hacker Rank. Uh, this was submitted by one of the viewers of my channel. So thank you for that. Um, it starts out, uh, it's the New Year's, and everybody's in line for a roller coaster ride. There are a number of people queued up, and each person wears a sticker indicating their initial position in the queue, um, starting from 1 up to, all the way up to N being the number of people. Um, any person in the queue can bribe the person directly in front of them to swap positions. If two people swap positions, they still wear the same sticker denoting their original positions in line. One person can bribe to, can bribe at most two others. So for example, uh, in, in the code, uh, again, I'll link all this stuff in here. Um, fascinated by this chaotic queue, you decide you must know the minimum number of bribes that took place to get the queue in its current state. So you're going to be given basically a list of numbers, and they're going to be kind of out of whack, and you need to determine whether or not, um, so one, is it impossible given the bribe rule that's set up here? Um, or if it is valid, then how many bribes must have happened to get the um, the bribes in the current state? Um, so I, I'll be uh, showing kind of an example of what this looks like. So for example, we have here a situation where the two one five three four. Um, so again, the, the original positions would be in order one two three four five. Um, but here there there was some swapping, and um, it looks like the answer is expected to be three. Whereas this situation. Um, it's actually too. This is impossible given the the rule of bribing, um, and we can see here that like the the person with the label five has brought had to and that that person would need to have bribed one, two, and then three people in order to get there. So that's that's breaking the rule. That's what's called too chaotic. I'm not sure why that was the string that they picked, um, but at least for this first example, let's kind of go through that. And they have a good example here. So uh, this is the original setup here, one through five. Um, person five bribes four, and so they you know that person jumps up one five bribes once more to get to the middle position and three is now kind of pushed back one and then here pers person two bribe person one and so two one five three four um, is a valid uh, uh, situation and three bribes have taken place there um, and what I think is noteworthy is that we're looking for the minimum number of bribes so for example if one bribe sorry if two bribes one and then one bribes two. You might think, oh, two bribes occurred, but that would ha that would just bring it back to the original state. So um, the minimum number is uh, a nice restriction, also. All right, just like I normally set up, um, you will have a little bit of time to tackle this problem on your own. Again, the link is in the description. This one is called New Year Chaos. Uh, it is a medium difficulty uh, challenge. I'll be doing this in JavaScript. Um, so take some time, check it out, and we'll come back with my solution. All right, uh, welcome back. Um, I'll be going over my solution now. Uh, this uh, does involve a little uh, time complexity because of some of the tests, they require some speed. Um, so getting this done in less than uh, n squared is, or, or quadratic time is uh, preferable. Um, so I'll start off just by in just creating a quick string uh, constant, because I like to do that, keep it nice and separated, um, any kind of literals. Uh, so uh, the total is uh, going to be the total number of bribes. So I'm setting that to 0. Um, and then I'm just going to be looping through the array. So the input array is called Q. Um, and so I'm just going from 0 all the way up to the length of Q, uh, basic for loop. But um, this current, what's kind of annoying is that the, the actual value of the, the, the integer within the array um, is not 0 index. It's actually like 1 through n. So I'm subtracting. Um, so I'm, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm going to grab what that number is, and then I'm just going to subtract one from it so I can get the, the, the like the zero index position. Um, so everything is going to be zero index because I kind of want to deal with the same uh, scale on everything. So this original position is where that current person started out. Uh, then I take the difference of the position they're, they're actually in right now versus the one they started in, and that will be what I call diff. Uh, we're basically going to check to see how how far has this person moved. Um, and right off the bat, if we, we know that if that person moved more than two spots, that they are violating the uh, bribe rule. And so we can um, stop stop execution, just return, and do console log. To it's too chaotic. Um, but if that passes, then we know, OK, so we have a situation that is valid. And we can uh, we have to think about a few things. So let me uh, 
pop over to my like little screen here that I like to, to show up here. So I want to show explain it kind of example what's going on with this. And I definitely recommend taking pen to paper and like trying to figure this out. That's what I ended up having to do. So here I have the original positions one through five as an example here, just to show you like how the movement kind of works and what considerations you need to, to think about. Okay, so um, let's assume for a second that we're going to focus on two numbers. Uh, we're going we're to keep three as our center, and we're going to consider what's happening to the number three. But the things that the, the people that can bribe number three are only four and five. So on the left here, I have what happens if four is the one bribing, and on the right, what happens if five is the one bribing. And we see that after one bribe, we see the three moves out of place, four is in that position, and in this one, five and four basically switch. Okay, and uh, the question to ask, what has happened to three? How many times has three been bribed? Because in the end, that's the thing we need to keep track of. Uh, and so on the left here, obviously three has moved, so it has been bribed one time on the left. On the right, um, three has remained in the same spot, so it hasn't been uh, moved at all. So it has no, no bribes there. All right, um, the next step would be to see what happens if four and five do one more bribe. So on, on the left, we have four moving up, uh, two is swapping in the position. Uh, and the question is, how many times has three been bribed? Uh, well, still, it's only been bribed once. It's uh, not being bribed more than once in this situation. So still only once. On the left here, five is now swapping with three. So that one has uh, is actually up to once as well. Uh, the thing I want to note here is uh, the, the thing that kind of like lets you know how how many times has three been bribed? Um, in the in this situation, the one uh, the first one that we see here on the left with the four, the thing that kind of denotes that you have been bribed is the fact that the people in front of you, all of, uh, the number of people in front of you that are like have a higher starting position, are the ones that have bribed you. So in this case, there's only one four, and that denotes that you've been bribed once. Um, here on this uh, right side, there are all the numbers in all the people in front of three are lower than three, therefore three has not been bribed. And that's how you can kind of tell. That's the, the way that you can tell. Uh, here on the left for uh, two, four moving at once, again, three is staying where it is, but it can still look at everyone in front. Only one four has been, uh, is, is bigger than three. So that's how you can tell that's one. Okay, so there's one more caveat to this situation I wanna go over because this still doesn't quite show you the whole picture. We need to try out one situation that kind of throws a, a little wrench into the problem. Okay, so the question now is, now that four and five have used their two bribes, what happens if three tries to do uh, a bribe? So let's check out the situation on the left here. So on the left, um, three and, so three will bribe uh, the two and go up once and we'll see that it's now in its original position. So it, this this is uh, one scenario where you have to think, okay, if I'm checking to see if the people if I've moved, you might think, okay, if I've moved more than two, then that's something to consider. If I've moved once, I need to consider that. But what happens if I I'm still in the original position? In this case, you've still been bribed once. And the way you can tell that is by the number of people in front of you that have more than your value. So this situation still shows a bribe of one. On the left here, we have the five. And uh, the five and the three got swapped. So basically, three and five have bribed each other twice. Or, you know, have you know, got swapped back. Uh, and so three is now in, in its original position. And you might think, okay, well, it's... The, th the three has been bribed once already, technically, because of this situation up here. But you have to think about the one restriction that we were told about where we're looking for the uh, the fewest steps. So if you check out, I'm going to zoom out here. If you check out our, our, our position from before, the, this, this one up here, this top one up here, and the one at the bottom have the same setup. The five and the four are swapped, but the three is where it's supposed to be, is, you know, in its original spot. So here we see that even though we know that we could like um, set it up so that three has been bribed once, we can tell, we can look at it and say, okay, but still the, in terms of the fewest number of bribes, we still can call this, um, that we could say here that three still hasn't been bribed because it still looks like the original situation of none. So that's why um, the situation here with the four, where three bribes is something that you need to consider. But on the right here, you can see that the people that, that are in front of three are still, you know, there are still zero in front of three that have um, a larger number than three. So that's how, that's the code that we're gonna be looking at right now. 
Okay, so um, let's go through this. So I, I took care of this first situation of um, the person having moved too far. So that's like our uh, case that we consider here. Um, but this statement, this difference, technically is actually not needed for the code to work. So I can pull this for loop out and it will still work. But I, I like to include it here just so that it shows a really strong understanding of what is going on with the problem. Um, so I'm checking if the difference is less than zero, meaning that the difference, so the difference is going to be negative if the person has moved backwards. So that that's the, these are the people that have been bribed. We, we care about these people. We don't care about the people who do the bribing. We want the count of people that have been bribed. And so uh, anyone who's basically having a negative difference, we want to consider. But like we saw in that example before, we also want to consider people who have remained in their own spot because that will potentially, even though it's rare, it's kind of a weird situation, um, we still need to consider the people who have stayed where they are um, because that still might have a situation of bribing having occurred. Okay, so um, I do a for loop here, and I'm going to grab. I'm not going to look at every single person in front. Um, while you can certainly do that, you will bump into timing issues. Um, and if you think about it, you don't really need to check everybody in front of you um, because there's only so much wiggle room with the rule of two bribes. Um, so at most, and again, I suggest you maybe try this out on pen and paper. Um, at most, um, a, the person behind you can bribe twice, and so only the person in front of you is the is like the limit basically you don't need to start at zero you need to start at the person in front of you and then all the way up to your current position which is behind that person um, so that's what this is doing here so I'm starting out um, I have math that max to it, for the one situation where you start out at the very front um, so you, you start with a zero and not like a negative one but um, Basically, it's a, that's a small consideration. For the most part, you're always checking the person that is in front of your original starting position. And then you loop all the way up to your current position. So that's what this is. And then you just do that check. And so here I'm grabbing the starting position of the that for whatever for forward person you're looking at. Um, and gra again, I'm like doing the zero indexing because I'm subtracting one because I, I want everything on the same um, scale here. Uh, and so I'm checking, okay, is that person in front of me? Did they, was their original starting position in behind me and if, or, or larger? And if it was larger than my, my original starting position, then I know they bribed me. I'm going to add one to my total. Uh, and you total that up and eventually you'll console log that. Uh, so I just want to check I well first I'll go through the big O notation here the time complexity so first we're um, the bigger for loop is going through all elements so that's big O of n right off the bat um, I will say this other inner for loop because we have a bit of a restriction there uh, it, it starts diminishing after it, there's like diminishing returns effectively and so that's why it's log n um, and by, if you look at the time complexity you have a big O of n times log n and that's uh, what you'll get in the end and so I think that's what is kind of required I'm not sure if you can get any um, uh, maybe, maybe I, I'm not quite sure if I, how I, I can get it lower than that because you do in the end still need to check some of the people in front of you and therefore you're requiring at least some, some N amount in there. Um, anyway, so let's look at this code. Let's, let's run it on the test cases. So that's passing. And if I submit that, it should, uh, should pass everything there. Uh, again, the time issue was, was a constraint for some of these. Uh, all right, so I hope that was helpful. I'll be uh, I'll be sure to include my code in like a, a GitHub just uh, just so you have it. I um, hope that was uh, useful. Uh, if you like my my content, you know, of course, like, subscribe, all, do all the good things, uh, and I will see you next time.